Hello everyone, welcome to the edited version of my all country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim. I decided to fly through every single country on the planet, uh, nicking some corners in some cases, but at least somewhat uh, flying over all the countries on the planet during the Olympics starting on July 26th. And I had previously been posting the entire flights onto YouTube, but it doesn't seem like that's a good idea. So I'll probably stop doing that and I'll just present these abridged versions as here I am flying the AVS Sim HD GKS F111 and taking off from Cape Canaveral and I'll be heading to the Bahamas after doing a little bit of a tour of Cape Canaveral. Now all these flights were done during Twitch live streams and that's why you have the chat in the upper left there and well that's completely out of context right now when I was posting the entire flights on YouTube. Of course, I wanted the chat there so you'd understand what the heck I was talking about and who I was talking to, but that's obviously not necessary anymore. So just ignore all that. And here I'm flying by pads 39A and 39B at Cape Canaveral. I flew by the vehicle assembly building, and here I'm going to fly by the skid strip by request of satellite 999, and then head out to the Bahamas. So I chose the F-111 because it had the right mix of maneuverability to be able to see these sites as well as the ability to go fast. It can go up to Mach 2.5 and also great range. It can go 3,500 nautical miles and in fact it probably can go more than that frankly speaking. Uh, this particular version seems to have quite a lot of range as here I am over the Bahamas and in, in fact this is the island where I placed the landing site for my Orion carrier plane in Kerbal Space Program. So if you've seen some of my Kerbal Space Program stuff, I made a special uh, first stage that lands horizontally on a runway in the Bahamas, and this is the island that lands on. So we covered the Bahamas and on to Cuba. So there's the approach to Cuba. I'll be going quite quickly here. You can see the Cayman Islands on the Sky for Sim map in the bottom right, uh, sorry, bottom left corner there. And I didn't go over the Cayman Islands on this flight, but I should have because the Cayman Islands, even though they are a territory of the UK, as it says there, they do have an independent Olympic team. And I decided to make it a policy to fly over places that had an independent Olympic team as well. And so I'll be getting the Cayman Islands on a different pass. And sorting out which places I need to fly over and which places I didn't was especially tricky around the Caribbean, where some places are the t territory of something. Uh, like France or Britain, uh, but others aren't. And then others are the territory of something, but they have independent Olympic teams and I decided to fly over those. So here I am flying over Jamaica, which is a separate country. That's, that's very clear. Jamaican team, of course, great rivals to the American track and field team. And here I'm cruising right along. Generally, for the speed, I'm targeting a ground speed of 1,200 knots. So anything below that, uh, we're going a little bit under speed and then 1200 is what I'm going for as I approach the coast of Haiti. Unfortunately, we had a lot of clouds here. I was using real world weather, but if I totally can't see the ground in the future, I'll be clearing up the clouds and I'll just not do real world weather. Of course, we want to see what's going on down there. And unfortunately, it was very cloudy over Port-au-Prince and I had not adopted the policy of changing the real world weather. So eventually I will do that, but not this time. And here we are crossing the border into the Dominican Republic. They both share the island of Hispaniola. And I didn't go close to the coast, close to Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo is way off there and I can't really see it. I decided to fly down the center of the island for whatever reason. This does not turn very well when it's going Mach 2. And we are going basically Mach 2.2 or 2.2 times the speed of sound. It takes, uh, to do U-turn, it takes about 80 nautical miles or say, 92 miles so yeah and so i passed by puerto rico puerto rico is a u.s territory but it does have an, an independent olympic team and so we nicked it a little bit uh, but it was there anyway i would have been flying over it no matter what and also having independent olympic teams are the british virgin islands and u.s virgin islands so i made a point to fly over those as well this is the british virgin islands that i'm flying over right now and yep well, all these little Caribbean islands I haven't visited very much, and I probably should visit at lower altitude. 
Uh, generally, the flights uh, are going to be from 65,000 to 70,000 feet uh, in order to get higher fuel efficiency. If I was flying lower, I would have worse fuel efficiency, as here I'm headed to the U.S. Virgin Islands and then on to St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts and Nevis is an independent country. And here it is. This is St. Kitts with the very prominent volcano remnant. I don't know if it's still an active volcano. I'm going to say no, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. And then Nevis is the other island there. But then I have to also turn around and get some other places. Uh, the Caribbean islands are fairly in a straight line. They're mostly in a straight line, but not entirely in a straight line. And so we have Antigua here as part of Antigua and Barbuda. And Antigua and Barbuda are one unit. Uh, they appear in the Olympics as one unit as well. And I could have just gone over Antigua and called it a day, but I decided to turn to Barbuda anyway and fly over Barbuda as well. So this is Barbuda. And make a big old turn and then I have to do a U-turn and get back on track. So yes, hello Barbuda. This video will contain the first three flights and... Altogether, I ultimately planned 27 flights to get through all the countries. We are not going to be ending up where we started. We're not going to land at Cape Canaveral at the end. We're going to end up in New Zealand because, uh, well, it's sort of there. Uh, it sits down there. So it's a little bit hard to get back from. Of course, I could ultimately make the trip back, but I consider that completely separate. The goal here is not to circumnavigate. and The goal is to encounter every country along the way. So Dominica is a country that participates in the Olympics. Martinique is not. Martinique is a territory of France. Saint Lucia is a country that participates in the Olympics separately, and I fly over that. Saint Vincent and the Grenadines also participate separately. But this is a good view of Saint Lucia as the sun is setting, and I try to make sure that I'm going to land soon. <laughs> that uh, the sunset was definitely troubling me at this point. So there's St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The island in front of us is St. Vincent, and the Grenadines are smaller ones. And all looking quite good. I guess these were all volcanic islands. And maybe the big one these days is Puerto Rico. Maybe that's part of the string. I don't know. I have to look up the geology of this region. Now, Barbados is off to the side, off to the east. So now I have to make a big turn over to Barbados and fly over Barbados. So we get Barbados as the sun is barely staying up for us and glinting in the rear view mirror pretty sharply. Mach 2.1 on the meter there and I still have an hour of fuel to go and then I continue to turn. I have to get Granada. So keep making a really big turn. There's the sun and lens flares galore. After Granada, though, it's the landing at Tobago of Trinidad and Tobago. So here's Granada, but the haziness of the late sun does not show us very much, but I try to get a look at it. So there we are. That is Granada, properly flying over it as well. Now, I perhaps should have made this edited version after the Olympics were complete so I could tell you how each of these countries did it in the Olympics. Though, you know, for a lot of countries, uh, they're showing in the Olympics isn't a high priority, let's face it. But anyway, I would have done that, but I needed to clear the files off of my hard drive, really. I can't fit all of the flights simultaneously right now, all 27 flights. That would be something like 500 gig gigabytes. So I'm making this edit because I need to clear stuff off, as here I am barely not knocking into everything as I park at Tobago, and I'll probably need somebody to pull me out. All right, so there I come to a stop, and then the next flight is from there, TTCP, Crown Point is where I landed on Tobago, and then I go through Trinidad, Venezuela, Guiana, Suriname, and then down to Brazil and landing at Brasilia. So that is the planned flight, a relatively short flight, uh, compared to some of the later flights, eventually I pushed the range of this all the way. Uh, but these initial flights I decided to make a little bit shorter. And so the first flight was two and a half hours in length. The second flight here is two hours and 12 minutes. 
And then the third flight, which will also be included in this video, is three hours and 24 minutes. So that one was really pushing it. Uh, but uh, that one wasn't pushing range so much as, well, I was probably running out of fuel a little bit near the end, but that was because I took a closer look at Rio de Janeiro and Buenos Aires. So I used extra fuel to go lower altitude. Generally, it's easier to stay higher altitude and then it's much more efficient. And as here, I approach Trinidad of Trinidad and Tobago and we'll cross the island to get to Venezuela. This is a very complex path that I basically got off of Reddit. There was somebody who posted on Reddit a path through all countries that would stay above land for as much as possible was the goal. And, but unfortunately there were some flaws in that because of the definition of quote unquote country. For instance, uh, that particular plan did not include Aruba as here we are over Venezuela and approaching the Orinoco River Delta. We are in the Orinoco National Park there. Well, Orinoco Delta National Park. Uh, the textures were not very good around here. You see, Aruba is part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, but it's considered a separate country and it participates in the Olympics separately as well. So it is a country country, but it's part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And that's subtle. I only went over, I ultimately decided to deviate to go over Aruba because of its peculiar state. But as far as the other things that are considered part of the Kingdom of Netherlands and yet being a separate country, those are really tiny and they don't participate in the Olympics separately, so I did not fly over them. Uh, but uh, I do ultimately, in a subsequent flight, fly over Aruba. It might have been easier to fly over Aruba on this flight if I had remembered. So we passed through Guiana. And here we are in Suriname. And we don't have to do French Guiana. That's the next uh, country, well, not country, area over to the east. And that's because that block, even though it's nice, it has crew launch site. And, you know, so space launches happen there. It's owned by the French. And it does not participate separately in the Olympics. So I didn't make an exception for it. But it's the territory of France. As here we are in Brazil crossing the Amazon River. Overall, I'd say that the textures for Venezuela, Guiana, Suriname, and northern Brazil were ra rather sad. Otherwise, I would delight in taking a flight down the Amazon and so a bush flight down the Amazon, but I don't think the detail is really there for that. Uh, it's, you really need a highly detailed area to support really close-in looks, and it's just not looking that way. However, southern Brazil, as we go further south, uh, the textures give me a little bit more hope. Uh, there's a lot more detail here, as you can see, as we're approaching Brasilia. And yeah, so around here is better flying. And of course, close to Rio de Janeiro or Buenos Aires, there's better textures. But yeah, northern Brazil, not as well covered. So I decided to do fuel dump because this is actually probably the shortest flight of the entire set. And the fuel dump feature of the F-111 is sort of special here. I don't approve of this from an environmental perspective, but this is just a game. Uh, I don't know. At least I'm not doing it over, over the Amazon, right? Uh, so there's that at least. But here we are coming in and I fly over Brasilia before landing. The airport's on the opposite side of the city. And this is what Brasilia looked like. Uh, still a patchy sort of photo scenery that we have on the ground. The seasons don't really match, but what can I do? There's a little air break out as I slow down. And I suppose part of the purpose of this flight is really to gauge where more detailed flights are worth doing and where maybe uh, the scenery right now doesn't support that level of scrutiny. So... Here, Brasilia is looking okay. I mean, it's still generic buildings. This is not photogrammetry or anything, but you know, it is not bad as I fly over it. And finally coming into landing. So there's the conclusion of the second flight. And again, it's, I think, going to be the shortest flight of all of them. So that's why I wasn't... Uh, shy about dumping the fuel because I was pretty heavy at that point. In fact, the external tanks definitely weren't necessary for this. You notice I'm continuing to carry the external tanks. They do uh, contribute extra drag. 
Uh, but I decided not to dump them on like the Amazon because that might start fires or something. Anyway, uh, I'll actually for later flights, I think I'm not even going to have the external tanks. Uh, the internal fuel is more than enough for a lot of this. Anyway, here we have a 3000 nautical mile plot to Peru, but I'm not going to actually get to Peru. I'm going to have to land at those airports that are part of the path in Chile. And the reason for that is that I go low altitude over Rio de Janeiro and Buenos Aires, and those passes cost a lot of fuel, and I was not able to extend out to Peru. So we'll be landing in Chile, contrary to that path. And it's still uh, more than three hour flight, so lo the longest so far. I decided to stay low on the way into Rio de Janeiro, and so that used extra fuel. And so we're we're not super low, but well, that low. You can see it on the Skyforce in dialogue that uh, pad, that box in the bottom left, uh, the speed that I'm going at at any given time and the altitude. But here is the pass at Rio de Janeiro, and it was misty. Uh, didn't clear it up, unfortunately, but you know, uh, you can still see what's going on and maybe the mist uh, adds a little bit of flair to the place. I decided to try to approach the Christ the Redeemer statue monument and we will see how that goes as I go below the sound barrier. I didn't mention it earlier, but the livery is a custom livery, a raised aerospace livery. And here I am heading towards the statue. You can see it on the top of that mountain there. And this is as close as I'm going to get at this speed. And again, it's turning radius, especially with wings swept and everything, isn't super. We're not at full speed, of course, but yeah. That's as good as that's going to get for now. And I didn't want to take any more fuel, so up we go. Rocketing up to a higher altitude. And we say goodbye to Rio de Janeiro. I continued towards Sao Paulo, but I didn't get a particularly good sighting of it. I stayed at high altitude this time, of course. And I don't know exactly how detailed the city is, but it's sort of in the clouds there. As I make a nice big turn towards Uruguay. And Uruguay, my, my impression of it is that it has a lot of rivers. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of riverness going on at Uruguay. I don't fly over Montevideo because I wanted to go towards uh, Buenos Aires. And so here's some of the rivers. And there is also the Uruguay River, which is to the uh, it's the forms the border between uh, Argentina and Uruguay on the west side. And produces this bay. In future flights, I'm not going to make a point of dipping down to see every little, well, every big city that I happen to pass over, uh, but I decided to do it for these two for whatever reason. Just having some fun, but most of the time I'm going to stay up high and only go low for the cities that I'm taking off for landing at. I wasn't entirely sure where the great sights of Buenos Aires were, but I did spot a stadium and a track, and so I decided to fly along those. But here is a scoping out of the scenery here. The full pass at speed. Obviously, uh, I would be disturbing quite a lot of people with my sonic booms uh, as I go along. Hopefully, people will forgive me. <laughs> but anyway, there's that track. I'm not too sure what that is, but it is there. And then there's a stadium there. And then with that, I decide to go up again. As far as I know, Argentina and Buenos Aires have never hosted the main Olympics, but they have hosted a youth Olympics recently. And that was in 2018 Summer Youth Olympic Games. So here to my right is the Uruguay River dividing Uruguay and Argentina. And I clipped this little bit of Argentina. Of course, Argentina is huge, but I'm not going through all of it. And here I am crossing over into Paraguay. And that is also a river crossing between the two countries. And I really only clip a little tiny of corner of Paraguay as well. I think it was mainly because I was worried about fuel and just wanted to make a straight line to Chile, 
But honestly, I think in retrospect, I could have probably covered more Paraguay instead of going back into Argentina. It's one of the plane's wide turns. Uh, generally speaking, it's a better idea to leave it on autopilot for the turns because the autopilot tries to keep you at your full speed. Whereas if I try and yank the plane around, I'll probably lose a lot of speed like that. And then I have to accelerate again, which costs a lot of fuel. And here we are crossing back into Argentina here, crossing that river. So only a little bit of a clip of Paraguay. Sorry, Paraguay. Back in Argentina, I found these fields, which are sort of interesting. They had a sort of broad, they remind me of tiles. Basically, they're like bathroom tiles with sort of broad gutters in between them. Not really gutters, obviously. There seem to be trees or something. But yeah, I found that very interesting because normally fields aren't so divided. There isn't so much space between fields. Uh, you know, here further along, there's uh, fields with smaller divisions, but those were particularly widely divided so I found that peculiar and I wondered why that was but anyway on to the Atacama Desert as we enter Chile I probably clipped a little bit of Bolivia there but I didn't count it as going over Bolivia just yet because I plan to do that separately anyway but you can sort of see I'm technically over Bolivia there as I uh, aim for Calama which was one of the airports that I had as an alternate if I couldn't get to Peru and it turns out that I needed that so here I am landing in the Atacama Desert. The Atacama is used sometimes to simulate Mars because it has a very similar sort of uh, environment in general. Well, of course, not the air. It's the breathable air, but it's very, very, very dry. It's like the driest place on Earth. And it sort of has the right look as far as Mars is concerned. So here I am landing at Kalama. and touchdown uh it ended up being a little bit squirrely and it's sort of a hard touchdown part of that's just because of the height i think this is like eight thousand feet above sea level so yeah i the feel of the plane when touching down is quite a little bit quite a bit different when you're at this kind of height compared to lower altitudes and this seems to be a handcrafted airport i have a lot of those from for chile from flights in Datio, so it could be just a mod a freeware mod and they usually do a good job with the airports. I'm not sure though. Either it's a freeware mod or it's actually built into the game. I'm not sure. But anyway, I landed and it's actually looking pretty good right here. And those were the first three flights of my all-country tour. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.